So this isn't your typical gear video. I'm going to Ukraine to shoot a documentary. So I've decided to document the way I pack for a filming trip, specifically a documentary. This video is going to be sort of talking you through the, the, the kit I use, the camera systems I use, the storage systems, everything that you need to make a sort of documentary. Going to a place such as Ukraine in time of war is, you know, it's been sort of a mental battle for myself, but I think packing my kit and rigging my cameras up in a way that is um, practical has been quite a good lesson for myself. Um, and it's definitely something that I'm gonna adopt and utilize going forward in, in my documentaries. So starting with a camera, and yes, I'm not just taking one camera, in fact, I'm probably taking one too many. I'm taking four. So firstly, my A cam, a Panasonic Evo. So this is my A camera. It's a Panasonic EVA1. Um, and I've had it since oof, coming up to four or five years now. I've had it so a little while. Um, and it's just an amazing piece of kit. It, I, think, I think it's one of the most underrated camera systems on the market. Um, there's a few things that I would like to change about it. And Panasonic, if you're watching this video, hit me up. Um, I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> Plug. But other than the few little things that I'd like to change, but other than that, it's an absolutely incredible camera system. Um, and the image is just gorgeous that comes out of it. Um, so this is typically set up for shooting on my shoulder. So I have my monitor mounted here, um, which I can pinch to zoom and then focus. Um, and then I typically just focus like this. Um, sometimes I have a focus reel, wheel here, but for this trip, um, I'm doing a lot of interviews in the car and on the road. So normally I shoot sort of shooting upwards with my monitor mounted this way. Yeah, I don't ever really touch the focus ring. So for my B camera, I needed something a bit more lightweight and portable. Um, and I decided to go for the Lumix S1H. Now there's, there's good reason for going with the Lumix, um, partly to keep in the sort of ecosystem of the Panasonic color realm. Um, I wanted to shoot all vlog and to keep all of that color profile is just exactly the same. So when it comes to the color grade, whoever's doing the color grade knows it's all shot on the same camera system. It's also a beautiful, beautiful color profile. Um, so yeah, that's something that I've always been a huge fan of. I don't know how Panasonic do it, but their color science is just, it's next level. Um, I think their highlight roll off is just some of the best in the game. And if I'm completely honest with you, I think Sony have got some serious competition coming up in their rear view mirror <laughs> with the Lumix camera body. Um, and yeah, I, I think I'll make another video on, on my sort of thoughts about this. But continuing on my C camera. This camera goes with me on every shoot and it's always in my pocket and that is my iPhone. Now I've been shooting on iPhone for years. There's some serious, serious pros of shooting on an iPhone. Um, mostly just how quick and versatile um, and easy and convenient it is to just whip it out of your pocket and you know hit the record button. A huge advocate for shooting on iPhone and that's why it's always my C camera because if I don't have my main big rig or if I don't have my smaller rig I'm able to just quickly grab and know that I'm able to get a good image out of it. My fourth and final camera is a stills camera. It's a Canon A1 um, and I'm just going to have that over my net snapping stills whilst I'm on the streets of Ukraine. I'm just going to take two rolls of film with me, portrait. I'm just eager to capture, well, what's going on there really, um, but in a 35mm format. Um, I think capturing negative film has always been a huge passion of mine um, and I wanted to continue that with taking my camera to your brain.
Now moving on to lenses, a big learning curve that I've sort of noticed and learned over the years is it doesn't matter what camera or how much your camera body is, all that really matters is what glass you put in front of it. And for this, I wanted to shoot on Helios, mostly because the image they produce is just gorgeous. I'm kind of addicted to the bokeh that they render. And again, I'm gonna make a whole nother video on why I decided to shoot on this specific lens. So four filters, I take a eighth Promist, just to make lights a bit more interesting of the evening and to, to give just a bit more character into the look. And then just a variable ND and some fixed filtered NDs, um, just for the S1H as it doesn't have built-in NDs. For SD cards, I'm shooting on my trusted 128 gigabyte Angelbird cards. They are the best cards in the market, hands down. And yeah, they're just, they're just good to go. <laughs> so I've mentioned in a previous video that my go-to for storage would be to take either a Lacey or a, a spinning disc hard drive and pair that with an SSD. Typically, I find that when I'm on the road, I like to back up onto an SSD because it's so quick um, and they're super lightweight. And then when I get some more downtime, i.e. checking into a hotel, I make another transfer. So I'm double backed up and I know that I'm, I'm safe. I just have to mention that my camera bag is just I love it so much. And Low Pro, if you're watching, thank you so much. Um, you've, they sent me that bag years ago um, and I'm just, I've just been so grateful for it ever since. <laughs> so for my headphones, my cans, I use HD 25s, industry standard. I love them. They're also my DJ headphones and they're like an extension of me, really. They come everywhere with me. They are a really good pair of headphones. Um, and then and then just normal bits and bobs, really. So SDI cables, HDMI cables, micro USBs, um, extra D-taps, extra microphones. I typically go with two sets of microphones and then two onboard microphones. Just something to put a lav mic on just so you can capture the audio and, and be in a run and gun style is, is really, really important for something like this. So just sort of making sure that I'm prepared for, for any situation really in terms of camera equipment, either breaking or just wanting to add or take away bits. And then that leaves me with another little bag where it's just full of like quarter inch screws, Allen keys, um, and also like a spigot or anything that I feel is necessary that I need to construct or deconstruct camera systems. So the rig itself, my main A camera is just on some uh, rods um, that I use with moose bars and a shoulder pad. I typically shoot handheld or I shoulder mount it so it's nice and steady with my shots, especially with walking. This trip is only a six day trip. So my camera equipment is way more important than my clothing. But obviously going to Ukraine in the winter, I needed to pack winter gear. So that consists of a few pairs of pants, um, long johns, thermals, a good coat and waterproof. And then I'm just taking one set of trousers. They're my hiking trousers um, and I have a tendency of using them when I'm shooting as well, um, just because they're so durable. And that just all lives in the main section of my bag. I also take a few tools with me, typically a T-bar and an Allen key, just so that if anything wiggles loose, I can just quickly get that nice and tight again. And then a few other last little things, um, a few candles. Um, I typically take a poly bag in case it rains or there's serious dust. I can literally not live without camera tape and a Sharpie or a biro just for if anything comes loose, you can just tape it down or mark it up. Very, very, very helpful. And something that I totally, totally advise and recommend 
making sure that is in your camera bag. So thank you for watching this video. Um, it's been a little longer than my typical uh, YouTube videos, but I thought it was um, good to sort of give you an insight into what I decided to take on a trip like this um, and for what kit I'm using to be able to shoot a documentary. So when you're watching this video, I would have come back from Ukraine. So expect to see more content um, on this and I can't wait to tell you stories and to let you know on the work that has been ongoing with Action Ukraine. Um, but for now, I'm gonna love you and leave you and I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys, bye.